Um, so we're going to call up our any logics here, and I'm going to switch over to my screen and and spare you the um, the image of of my febrile state. Um, okay, so uh, we have any logic now, and now we're going to call up a new model, and this model will be initial S S D S I R S. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to call it V one and the time unit will be days. Okay. So 1.0 in time, a variable representing a period of time, like recovery delay will mean one day. Okay. Okay, um, so we're going to have a canvas uh, over here, and I'd like you to go go down to the system dynamics palette on the left hand side here. Okay, <laughs> now per the video that I shared with you, the goal for today is going to be to explore some of the structures, some of the behaviors, some of the assumptions behind, and some of the fundamental concepts underlying contagion. With the particular example we're applying here being contagion of pathogen. But the concept of contagion transcends its particular manifestation, much as in the world we could encode information in many different forms. Information is not a material thing. We could encode it with strips of paper with symbols on it. We can encode it with, with ones and zeros in core memory. Uh, we could encode it with you know, with a small electrical charges and capacitors and, and integrated circuits, we can encode it with, with you know, uh, uh, marks on a chalkboard or, or uh, in an abacus, uh, um, uh, sort of uh, small beads. Um, so it is that something like contagion. It's a type of process that transcends any one area. It's not merely about pathogen. We have many types of many processes that are could be reviewed as as contagion processes without being about pathogens. That is, without being viruses or bacteria or microbacteria or mycobacteria or or um, you know some sort of parasite or what have you. Can you give me a few examples of contagion? type of processes where they're spread, say, from one person to another, to simplify your thinking, um, in other areas besides spread of uh, communicable illness. Can anyone suggest a few areas? Superstition? Yes, yeah, spread of superstition. Others? I was going to say ideas, but I, I think it's the same. Well, yeah, ideas, I mean, there, there can be Positive ideas, right? Superstition, uh, and I I put it there: misinformation and conspiracy theories, and um, you know, bundling together uh, a set of related concepts there. Um, but then there's also ideas that could be positive, like about innovation, right? The spread of knowledge of of of, of a spread of new knowledge, for example. How about uh, any others? Those are those are all excellent. Um, any others come to mind? Spread of fire. Good spread of fire. Excellent. Yeah. Anyone else? Computer malware. Sorry, a computer modeling. Computer malware. Oh, malware. Yes, yes. Computer viruses. Yes, indeed. Maybe computer modeling. After all, I'm I'm spreading it to you here, right? Um, I, the fact, you know, in all of these cases, the fact that some other there's some other instance of it with whom you have contact 
makes your gabby get much more likely fire ideas innovation you know rumors you know misinformation um spread of knowledge information etc right um there, there's a, a a notion of spread that's common to all of them from one to another um it takes two to tango it takes one that has it and one that doesn't yet have it right okay uh, so we're going to build up a model of contagion. It happens to be contagion, uh, a pathogen, but you could recognize the structure as a common. It could be spread to adoption of services online um, or products, you know, um, spread by word of mouth, for example. Um, okay, so we're going to go to the system dynamics palette here, and we're going to drag in a stock. Okay, and this stock is going to be called susceptible. These are the folks who haven't yet caught this illness or have no immunity to it, or have haven't have no immunity to it in general. They can they can catch it. Now I'm going to copy this. Or I can select it and and uh, click on it while holding the control key and copy it. And I'm going to call this infective. Okay. Sometimes we call it infectious. And I'm going to do that again, holding down the control key and pressing the left mouse button while dragging and I'm gonna call this recovered, okay? And initially recovered is gonna start as zero. Infective is gonna start as one. And susceptible is going to start as 1.2 million people 1.2 times 10 to the sixth so that's 1.2 million about the province the 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 population size of our fair province okay um so we have almost everyone starting susceptible. One key spark, one key person starting infective, and no one starting susceptible. And you're going to tell me, based on your review from that lecture, so, so these are the nouns. These are the current state of the system. If we were to freeze time, this is what we could measure the number of susceptibles, the number of infectives, the number of recovered. But there are processes, there are actions which change people's status. If someone is in one of these states, they could go to another. Where? So we're going to focus on two such processes initially. Um, for a take-home exercise, you're going to look at, excuse me, at a third. So you're going to tell me, where is one of these processes of change, these actions gonna, gonna go from where to where? Anyone? A flow, where is it gonna go? Whence is it gonna come from and where, whither will it go? That means where does it go from and where does it go? Susceptible to factors. Good, 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 yeah, yeah. So here uh, we're going to call this new infections. In the health sciences, we'd often call it incidents, but um, uh, with E-N-C-E, -E, but um, I won't use that here. And then there's going to be another flow between which two? Infective and recovered. 
infective and recovered. Good. Now, you noticed I, with malice of forethought, I, I left exactly three of these larger squares between these. But in general, you may not have done that. You may have, you know, had them further out. Make sure again that they that when you draw the when you drag this in, if you if it doesn't stretch to the one you want, you could either bring this over there, make sure it turns green, or you could bring this over there. Um, okay. Um, and uh, either way, make sure that the connection from this to this is green on both sides. And this flow will be called what? Recovery. Okay. Okay, now, one of these is going to be a first order delay. One of these flows is given by a first order delay, is part of a first order delay. Which one? The recovery one. The recovery one. The recovery one is such that the number of people recovering per unit time is just the number of people who are infective times some constant or divided by a constant equally so. <laughs> so um, we're going to go take a parameter here. We're going to say mean recovery time and i'm tempted to say in days just to emphasize it i was asked last time you know or time before that if we might sometimes mix in the same model things with different so i mean yeah we we could but you're always going to convert them back to the standard time unit when you're combining with other factors to to determine the rates, for example, of the flows. So I'm I'm emphasizing mean recovery time in days. Maybe someone's looking at this and it'll just remind them that the units are days. And it's going to be 10.0 to belabor the point. At the risk of belaboring the point, what does 10.0 mean? 10.0 what? The average number of days it takes before an infective Good. moves to recovery. Good. Good. Yeah. It's the number of days. It's an amount of time. So it's its dimension is time. Its unit is what? Days. 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 Yeah. Remember, a given dimension, length can have many particular units, right? We measure length in feet and meters and angstroms and microns and in inches and fathoms and furlongs and li and and you know parsecs and and light years and you know many different scales, right? Um, but they're all length, time has many different units associated with it as well. Um, and, and uh, you know, we, we can measure things in seconds or years or centuries or months or millennia or what have you. Um, so the, the unit of this is days, the dimension is time. And we're going to, Hitch this up to the delay. So this delay, the, excuse me, to the to this flow. So this flow, this here recovery flow. I'm telling you, the value of it at any one time is going to depend on this constant. I mean recovery time in days. But what else is it going to depend on? What else must it depend on to be a physically meaningful thing? Or because it's a first order delay. Number what else? Of infectives? Number of infectives, yeah. Yeah. After all, I mean, we're, it'd be kind of, 
can be kind of unsettling, eerie almost, right? If the number of people recovering at a given day was independent of the number of people infected, like who's doing the recovering, right? Some ghostly recovery. No one's sick, but people are still recovering. That would be, that'd be downright weird. This is a mechanistic model. It's characterizing the kind of mechanics by which the processes in the world work. It's saying, in order for recovery to occur, there have to be infectives. That's quite different. I want to, I want to argue and, and emphasize this point. That's quite different than just an associational model where you say, well, when infectives are high, recovery is high. When recovery is high, infectives tend to be high. And I don't care whether it's a it's a simple linear regression or it's the fanciest deep learning model in the world. Those are associational models as traditionally practiced. They find ways of saying, well, this is described as a function of these things. And it could be, you know, a fancier relation involving logistic regressions or exponential regressions, not just linear regressions, or we could use a deep learning with multiple neural networks, characterizing how this thing depends on these things. But but it's 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 characterizing their association and it takes into account their correlations with each other. This is a mechanistic model. This is saying in order for recovery to happen, someone needs to be infected. So we have that, like all the three modeling types that we're covering in this class are involve mechanistic models, okay? They're characterizing the mechanics of the system. For one thing to happen, this has to be true. And it, it's sort of step-by-step -step process. So this is important. And to situate this in the context of modern data science, I hope you'll appreciate that it's, it's a different type of modeling. It's not incompatible with those other types. No, we, we use findings from those other types, but there are certain needs for which you really need a mechanistic model, particularly asking about counterfactuals, what if questions, where there's no data about it. You are characterizing what the situation would be if you do something. Okay. It's a bit of a philosophical point, but this is an ex an example of a mechanistic model. So what's the formula here? You tell me. It's a first order delay. I've, I've told you that. So what's the formula? What does it have to be to be dimensionally correct? Infectives, the uh, number of people in infectives over time. Good. Infective divided by what? Tell me what to type. Mean recovery time. Mean in days. recovery time in days. Yeah. Yeah, because... Uh, as was Amna mentioned, I, I think I, I recognize the voice, um, uh, the dimension of the flow has to be the dimension of the stock divided by time. And indeed, that's the case. It's the dimension of this is whatever the dimension of this is divided by the dimension of this, which is time. Okay. So this is a first order delay. That hopefully should be familiar to you, right? Um, I'm, I want to motivate this a little bit. Some people may wonder, like, why is it divided? It seems kind of, seems like maybe you know, you know, okay. It, okay, the mean time, if the mean time is this, we divide by the mean time, but may seem disconnected. Let, I want to emphasize this point again. Look, if the mean time to recovery was were 10 days, that's what we've that's what I asked you to assume here by default. 10 days. And we had a hundred people in here, we'd expect roughly one tenth of them, because it's 10 days, and any given day, about one tenth of these to leave. So be the number of infectives divided by 10 who would leave. If this were five days, we'd expect one-fifth of them to leave per day, this divided by five. If this were just two days, we'd expect about half of these to leave per day. It'll be the number of people leaving will be this divided by two, kind of per day. It's kind of a hand-wavy argument, but I, I hope you get the intuition there. It makes sense that it's this divided by that. It kind of accords with our sense that, you know, um, 
the fraction leaving per day is going to be one divided by this, right? Um, if this were 100 days, only 1% of these would leave per day. One over 100 of them would leave per day on average. If it's memoryless, and that's what we talked about last time. It doesn't matter how long ago they came in. It's well, it's well mixed. It doesn't matter how long they've been there. 1% of them is going to leave per day. Okay, so that's good. Now, this flow... For someone to go down this flow, all they have to be is in the infective stock previously. How about for this flow, for new infections? I argue before you, I submit to you, that this is different than this flow. This flow involves a dependence on having to have two different types of things in place for anyone to go down here. In order for someone to go down here, you need someone in the infective stock. In order to go down here, you need someone in what stocks? I'm, I'm saying there's two stocks you need people in. What are those two? Infective and susceptible. Yeah, infective and susceptible. It takes two to tango. You need not only a susceptible from which to bring them, you need an infective to infect them, right? Just like with the spread of wildfire, for fire to be here, there needs to be fire that can spread to it elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, so here we're going to have a somewhat more articulated structure. It's going to have to consider the number here and the number here. And I want to walk you through the logic. And I want you to grok the logic with a K. Don't worry about that K. Let's we'll see. No see. Okay. Um, I'm gonna call up the chat. I've been missing the chat. I'm not talking about the cat, the shop. I'm talking about the anyway. Um, okay, good, good. I'm seeing lots of good comments here. This is awesome. Okay. Um okay, so I'm gonna walk you through the thoughts. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put in a total population okay um, and I'm gonna say total population I, I I feel a little bit torn I don't think I should say total population size but I hope it's you know just in the balance between brevity and clarity I I hope that's clear enough we often say what's the population of Saskatchewan you know this year I hope it's vernacular enough that it's familiar. Total population. Um, yeah, well, you tell me. I'm, I'm adding things here. You you should be telling me. What does this depend on? On what does this depend? Remember, the state of the model is the number of people, the susceptible state, the effective state, and recovered state. At any one time, those are the things we can measure. If we froze time, we could count the number of people at each of those states. That's the number of time. Yes, the total population depends on the number of people in each of those stocks in turn. Now, those who are further along in their thinking may maybe reflect the fact, maybe on the fact that the total population here is fixed. So it is for the moment. I'm not always going to promise that it's going to be forever fixed. Um, uh, Okay, and let's get this over here. Okay, and you're going to tell me, first of all, what's the dimension of total population? If the dimension of each of those stocks is person, what's the dimension of total population? People. People, yeah, person, person. And, uh, or you could call people, sure. Um, I dragged in a dynamic variable. That has an instantaneous relationship with these others. And the formula for it is going to be, we can only add, or for that matter, subtract things of equal dimension. Yes, it's going to be the sum of all stocks. Thank you, Hep. Susceptible, oops. Susceptible plus infective plus recovered. You notice I capitalized it, total population. 
I try to be, as I said, I try to be consistent. And sometimes I lapse. Last time I lapsed. Um, I hope you can chalk it up to my to my illness. But um I try aspire um to to be consistent. Um stocks, capitals, flows, lowercase, uh parameters, lowercase. Aspects of state other than stock, like I would consider the stocks the, the basic elements of state. There's a derivative quantity of, of a derived quantity or a sort of dependent quantity, total population. I happen to capitalize that and I could probably argue about it um uh either way, uh, but I'm I'm calling it total population. But in any case, it's the sum of these three things. In order to sum these up, they have to have the same dimension. That's a fundamental fact. Um uh just like to have you know subtract them, it's the same dimension. If you if you have e to the x x has to be dimensions because x of anything is one plus x plus x squared divided by two plus x cubed divided by three and so on and and x has to be dimensionless for that sum to be of the same dimension. Um, that that was a bit of tidbit for those following more closely or interested in this. Okay. Um, Okay, so we have the total population. And now we're going to compute a quantity that is commonly called prevalence of infection. Now, I'm going to call it that. But it's the fraction of the population, or if you prefer, the proportion of the population that is infective. And you're going to tell me what the formula is for it. I'm going to drag in a dynamic variable, and I'm going to call it prevalence or maybe I'll call it infection prevalence, okay? We'll spare ourselves a, an extra word. Infection prevalence. Give So it's the fraction of the population that's infective. Tell me what the formula is. Remember to factorize things. You, you can always go back to the basics to, to express it, but if there's quantities that already are an abstraction that capture a concept, we want to make use of them. And indeed, Ken has gotten the, into the spirit of it. So it's infection, it's infection prevalence is given by total population divided by infective. Okay. There we go. So infection prevalence is infective divided by total population, right? Notice how I factorized it. I already had something called total population. I could have written infective divided by susceptible plus infective plus recovered quantity, you know, in parentheses, but that would have been wasteful. We already had an abstraction that captured this, and it's going to be much clearer to look at here. Someone could glance at this and say, oh, okay, that's the, the total population. Okay. So this is the fraction of people that are infected. Uh, good. Now, we're next going to put a quantity that is going to represent the probability per day that someone will be infected. Does anyone remember from that video about what the formal name for this is? It has a rather distinctive name. It's uh, getting close, but it's actually not called rate of infection. There's, there's a specific term for it. Uh, it is a hazard rate, so I welcome these. I welcome these suggestions. And, and I, I, force I think, of infection. Force of infection. Force of infection. During the pandemic, people were talking about this. We were reporting it for seventeen jurisdictions across the country for PHAC. For, for all the provinces, for Indigenous Services Canada, for First Nations Reserves and Six, reporting that was one of the main quantities. And it has a very intuitive meaning. It's, you, what's the chance per day is susceptible will get infected in the population? We were estimating using machine learning combined with dynamic models and these sort of models, compartmental models. 
Um, okay. Um, force of infection. And you're going to help remind me. Um, well, I'll, we'll fill in, we'll fill in some gaps. What other things? So what are the things this will depend on is infection prevalence, but what else will it depend on? On what else will it depend? Anyone? The contact rate. Good. Contact Contacts. rate. Yeah. So I'm going to say contacts per day. Okay. And you could think of it as the number of contacts a susceptible has per day with anyone. Well, equally much so, you can think of it as the number of contacts an infective has per day with anyone. But it's the number of contacts per day people in the population have on average. We could call it mean contacts per day, and maybe we'll do it. It's not referring to like mean, like, oh, they're mean to me, right? It's, it's like average, uh, like probabilistic mean, right? Um, the expected value of it um, across the population. It's it's not the niceness of that contact. Um, okay, um, mean contacts per day. And we are going to make this 20, okay? So any contacts per day. Now, what a contact's going to be is going to be different for different communicable diseases. Um, for something like uh, COVID-19 and influenza, uh, it could be being exposed to the aerosols breathed out by another person. For something like cholera, it could be um, contacts uh, of, of using the water that others uh, have been using recently, like liquid, um, uh, for, for something like um, sexual contacts, like gonorrhea, chlamydia, could be a sexual, a sexual encounter or, or, or a form of contact. Um, for a spread of bloodborne infection through injection drug use, it could be sharing of needles per day, what have you. Um, so, so just be aware, like the notion of contact is not some fixed thing um, that is, is the same invariant across all models. For spread of conspiracy theories, you can bet that the form of contacts they're gonna look like would include online interactions, right? Um, spread of innovation, it might involve um, contacts of a more substantial sort where one person learns about the innovations through some sort of information that's more substantial or talking with an existing practitioner of it, um, spread of information uh, or, or, or misinformation might involve as something as simple as a, you know, uh, you know, what uh, disinformation loaded story online right um so contacts have different notions for for those who think that somehow that's impossible to measure i'm i would beg to differ we we actually measure these things a lot um we have studies run with smartphones where we record people's proximity to each other close enough that they're likely to be in in, in to able to spread infection. You can do this with wearables and beacons these days. Um, so, you know, we measure these things. There are surveys that are used to estimate the number of people people come into contact with per day. There's observational studies. Um, there are ways of, of, of looking at the uh, number of sexual partners someone might have through self-report and having that be reported. And these things are very well well studied. Um, uh, there are things as well one can do to get some understanding of exposure online, as some of the people in the class, like Jeff, would, would know, using, using tools uh, such as Ethica, our platform. Um, so here we have contacts per day, um, mean contacts per day, and Force of infection is going to depend on that. But there's one other factor that it's also going to depend on which it will also depend. Does anyone want to comment on that? What's, what's another 
factor on which it would depend besides the number of contacts and the fraction of infection in the population and in those contacts by assumption. What, what's the other thing that you need to know? How effective the virus is it being transmitted? Yeah, and, and did I hear, uh, excellent. So that's exactly it. Did, was someone else gonna say something too? Uh, I was gonna say vaccines have lesser immunity. Okay, we're gonna be talking about vaccines pretty soon. So so I love that point. Um, we, that's at the moment, that's outside the scope of the model, but we'll be seeing that soon. So that that's a good thought. And we're gonna put a pin on that and come back to it. Uh, give you a hint, it'll take people who would otherwise be susceptible and put them into a different protected status, like a, a status where they're protected, okay? Um, but what I heard was the, the transmissibility, the ability of the virus to be transmitted. So the the term for art of art of this is, is you could say transmissibility. I'm going to be brutal. I'm going to be brutal in my my loquaciousness here okay um so don't don't all of you faint okay um only i'm allowed to do that here um so i get to say probability of transmission per you could say contact but it's really per discordant contact um discordant contact and i know you you may revolt um some of you may be you know, going to pause right now to drop this this class. But um, the point discordant means is it's not just, it's not like a given that per contact there's transmission. Why do I say that? Why is it not just a given if there's two random people that come into contact that there'll be transmission with this probability? Because what? Not all contacts are infective. Not all contacts are infective, and not all people contacting them, not all contactees are susceptible, right? You need two to tango. You, one has to be infective, one has to be susceptible. That's what it means by discordant. They are different. So it's a contact between a discordant pair. So, so that's what I'm saying, and I'm just, forgive me, you may hate me for it, but at least you'll keep me when I'm clear. Okay, okay. Probability of transmission per discordant contact. And I'm going to say 0.04, 4% chance of transmission. One out of 25 per discordant contact. So per contact between an effective and a susceptible is a 4% chance it'll be transmitted. It may cause you to shrug may lead you to say, oh, that's no, 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 uh, no big potatoes. Well, it's going to be pretty big potatoes soon. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so what I'd like you to do now is to complete the thought. So we've been motivating these things by thinking what on what would the my chance as a susceptible of going out there, of getting infected per day depend? It's going to depend on my contacts. It's going to depend on the prevalence of infection out there, including above my contacts and on this probability. And so I'm going to pitch them all up. After all, we, we've posited, so we've hypothesized it depends on all of these. And now you're going to help me write the formula for this. You watch the video. So I'm going to start. Mean contacts per day. So suppose I'm a susceptible. I have contacts with 100 people per day. Just imagine. I know it's 20. But imagine it's 100 per day for the sake of the argument and the mental math involved, 100 per day. 
what's something I need to ask about? So, so we want to get a probably per day that I as a susceptible get infected. So I, I have contact with a hundred people total. And we're going to take into account this probability of transmission that 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 an effective will infect me. But to do that, of those hundred people, I need to find out how many are what. How many are infected? infected? Infected. Then I could use this probability if each of them will transmit to me. So good. So. We're going to use the approximation that among these people that I see per day, say the 100, that the fraction of them that are infective is the same as the prevalence of infection. So the prevalence of infection among them is the same as the prevalence of infection in the whole population. The fraction of them that are infected is the same as the fraction of the whole population that's infected. So I'm going to say infection prevalence. Okay, so this times this, what is intuitively, what is this going to mean? This is the total number of contacts I have per day, maybe 100. Imagine the prevalence of infection is 50%, 0.5. This is 0.5. What does this mean? That multiplication, what is that giving me? Is it the number of contacts I have per day total? Average number of infected contacts you get? Average number of infected contacts I have per day. So if this is 100 and this is 0.5, the, the fraction of prevalence among them is 0.5, then this is going to be 50 contacts with infectives per day, right? Contacts with 100 people total and 50% of them are infective. 0.5, then I have contacts with 50 infectious contacts per day. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to assume for each of those contacts I have with an infective, and this is an approximation, I'm going to have a probability of transmission of this here, because I'm by, we're positing I'm a susceptible. That's why we're going to be applying it to these susceptibles. Um, that they have contacts with those many infectives and each of those confer a probability of this, a 0.04 here of getting infected. So again, this is the total number of contacts they have per day. This is the total number of contacts they have with infectives per day. This is an approximation to the total probability that they have of getting infected once you consider all of those different contacts with infectives. Okay. 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 So that's the force of infection. That's the chance per day that a given susceptible will get infected. So how are we going to use this? And where are we going to use this? By the way, I do expect you to know the reason. That's why I emphasized it so much. Where are we going to use this? Link to new infections. New infections, good. So this is the rate. Head is right. It's the rate of infection. It's the, and, and whoever said, Spencer said, it's the hazard rate. Darn right, it's the hazard rate. It's the hazard rate of infection. It just has to be called force of infection. It's like the pressure on me chance per day that I as a susceptible will get infected and have to stay at home and deliver this lecture remotely. Okay. Um, what else will new infections on what else will new infections depend? Number of susceptibles. Good, good. Number of susceptibles. And we said this was a rate. This is a hazard rate. So you're going to tell me, what's the formula? Susceptibles times force of infection. Yeah, susceptibles times force of infection. Okay, susceptibles. Yeah, susceptible times force of infection.
make sure it builds, make sure it's a happy camper. So look, I mean, this should remind you of the same pattern we use for I mean, a very similar pattern to first order delight where this is a rate and this, the, the value of the flow is just the rate times the susceptible. What's different here is this is not a constant anymore. No, 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 it depends on the state of the model. So it's not a first order delay because it de doesn't depend just in some purely linear way with this being a constant on this. Um, I would not call that a, a first order delay. Um, it's something fancier than this. Um, okay, we're about to go on to run this, but are there any questions um, about this before we go on here? Make sure you can build. Build early, ladies and gentlemen, build often. It's a lesson for life. Okay. Okay. Um, any questions on this? Anyone say, could you just tell me what you put in? What was the number for probability of transmission per discordant contact? Anyone? Um, what was the infective, uh, infection prevalence again? The infection prevalence, good question. And I welcome these questions. Awesome, Amna. Um, it's infective divided by total population. So it's this divided by that. It's a formula. It's a dynamic variable. Mm -hmm. Infectives divided by total population. It's the fraction of the total population that is infected. Okay. Value for infective was one. Great questions. Keep them coming. Any other question? Susceptible is 1.2. You might six i'll go through the parameters uh when would you want to use a dynamic variable in a parameter dynamic variable is used to calculate in general a change in quantity based on the current state an instantaneous changing quantity a parameter is used to specify a pre-specified most commonly fixed constant value uh a dynamic param a dynamic variable or the, the the actual normal term of art for this auxiliary variable is used to calculate something as a function of the current state. Total population as a function of this plus this plus this. Infection prevalence as this divided by that. Um, force of infection is this, you know, this times this, well, this times this times this. This times this. Um, yeah, it, hopefully that's helpful. The value of the probability is 0.04. Let me, let me go through these just one more time. Um, so this is 20 mean contacts per day. This is 0 0.04 probability of transmission. This is mean recovery. Oh, ah, help, help, no. Um, mean recovery time of days is 10. Mm -hmm. Initial value for susceptibles is 1.2 E6, 1.2 times 10 to the sixth. Infectives is one, recovered is zero. Okay. Okay, I'm going to push on because time, Tempest Fugit, and time is limited. We're going to rename the simulation baseline as a reference scenario, and we're going to run it. Okay, so we we see things moving, and we note the number of infectives is rising, and it's rising. But before we complete this picture, I want to do something a little bit more artful than just showing this. I want to create a graph. So we're going to go down to the, to the analysis palette, excuse me, this one here, analysis palette just up from the controls, just down from the space markup, three down from the measure of man and red. Make sure you go to the analysis. We're gonna drag it in a time plot. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be called 
stocks Todd plot. And one by one, we're going to list the stocks here in heinous succession. Okay, one, two. Okay, I'm pressing that plus. Boom, boom. Just copy them down. And one by one, I'm going to list them. Okay. Bada bing, bada bing. Just one by one, I listed them out here and I didn't change anything else. I am going to finally, so what did I do? I dragged in a time plot. I called it stocks time plot. And I used this plus to create both of these. And then I put susceptible in that one, effective in that one, recovered in that one. Okay. Okay. Final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to baseline and I'm going to set this to stop at specified time 100. Just change this stop under model time for this. The model time, if you need to expand this accordion menu and have it stop at time 100. I'm going to call this now V2. Okay. Sorry, could you repeat what you said about the, oh. the model time? Ah, okay. I closed it. Uh, sorry. Um, I, I came back to, to answer your question. <laughs> I closed it. Uh, closed the whole ID logic, not just the window that it was running. Um, uh, okay. Let's hope. Uh-oh. Uh Oh no, job's still running. Ah, okay, okay, we may be in, we may be in trouble here. Give me, give me a second. Okay, okay, we're we're, I think we're okay. Um, so uh, yeah, I I set the baseline to be went down to model time, and set it to be stop at specified time, and I just used the default there. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so here we go. So that will stop it at time 100. And you're going to tell me what's going on here. Okay, so someone tell a story about what we see. What's the story? What's a good story? for, Or what's, what, what's the story that comports with what we're seeing what's going on initially almost everyone is starting what susceptible susceptible, yeah. susceptible. good 1.2 million of them okay what's going on here in this region What's the blue? What's the blue? Susceptible. It's the number of current. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm talking about the navy blue, not not the light blue. Good, good call. Is this? Would you call this blue? What is it? Purple. No. Purple. Is it purple? Okay. Forgive my aesthetic sins. Um, purple. Okay, the purple. Um, what's going on with it? What does that represent? The purple. Number of infectives at any given time. Yes, if we see an exponential growth, why is it exponential? More infectives lead to more infectives. Good. More breeds more. There's a positive feedback loop. Tell me where the positive feedback loop lives. Give me, give me some links that lead to a positive feedback here. The infection prevalence increases the force of infection. Good. Which leads to more new infections. More new infections, which increases the inf infective people, infectives which and leads increases. to more infection prevalence, right? Plus, 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 plus. Right? 
going around. Why doesn't that continue forever? So we see it exponentially, yes. And that's the nature of exponential or of reinforcing feedbacks, right? They lead to more and more and more, quicker and quicker and quicker multiplication, most commonly exponentially. For those who are more quantitatively inclined, dx dt is proportional to alpha, some constant times x. The rate of change now is proportional to the number that are there now. So the number of infectives now leads to a rate of change of number of new infections uh, proportional to it. Yeah, okay. Um, so we see that exponential growth, but why does it that go on forever? What happens? Yeah, the fire just like runs out of fuel. Yeah, we run out of susceptibles. So there's a negative feedback involved. And where's a negative feedback here? Give me a negative feedback. More susceptibles, more new infections. More new infections. What is this? What's the, there? there's a, there's a link going back from new infections to susceptible. What's the polarity of that link? Minus more, or plus? More, more new infections, infections, less susceptible. Yeah. yeah, it leads to less susceptible. So there's a negative feedback loop here. That negative feedback loop balances out this, this positive one. It starts to become dominant as we're running out of susceptibles. Each Loss of a susceptible leads to fewer, and uh, or let's put it this way: each susceptible leads to some new infection, which leads to fewer, even more, even more constraints on susceptibles, and and that limits it. What's going on here at this peak? You saw it in the video. What's going on at the peak? Okay, There's Troy, maybe you could talk with what is uh, talk with Matthias about it uh, in the. He's in the link here. Sorry, Amna. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no susceptibles left to infect. So there's a reduced number of uh, susceptibles left reaching a peak. Okay. So, so when there's a peak, it's flat. So, so I mean, I know it may look like a, a peak, but at that point, it's not going up or down. At that very peak, it's not going up anymore. It's not going down. It's It's just there if and this is a plot of the stock infective what does it mean if the stock infective is not going up not going down if it's flat what does that mean what does it tell us about inflow and outflow inflow and outflow are equal and the effective reproductive number is one the effective reproductive number is one what is the basic reproductive number here does, does anyone remember? Let's 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 take Jeff's idea further. Basic reproductive number is what does it mean? The basic reproductive number, the what? Average. The average number of people infected by a single infective in a very special case. What is it? Good call, Troy. Um, it's in a very special case that everyone around is susceptible. What is the basic reproductive number in this in this model? How many people, if everyone is susceptible, how many people will a given infective infect before they recover? Well, let's do the calculation. Suppose I'm a single infective, I'm first infective, I'm in a sea of susceptibles. I have contacts with 20 people per day. That means so 20 infectives. Each of those people, I have a chance of 0.04 of infecting. 20 times 0.04 is 8, for those not familiar with it, um, or not not uh, quick on your, your, your uh, toes with math, uh, with arithmetic. 20 times 0.04 is 8, okay? Mm -hmm. um, excuse me, it's, it's, it's 0 0.8, excuse me, what am I, what am I saying? 0 0.8. Point it. Um, if I'm not quick my toes with it, especially when I'm sick. 20 times 0.04 is 0.8, right? Um, and then that's per day, I have contacts with 0.8. I, I'm infecting 0.8 people, right? I 
Contact with 20 susceptibles. Each of them is a chance of 0.04 being infected. So it's 0.8 people per day that I'm infecting. And how many days am I infected on average? 10. 10. So I infect on average how many people before I recover? 0.8 eight. times 8. Yeah. 0.8 times uh times uh 10 which is eight exactly um it's not the probability of infection because you have to take your cut how many people i have contacts with if if i were just to have contact with a single person it'd be the probability of infected times mean time i have to take into account how many people that that i have contacts with per day so the basic reproductive number is eight the effective reproductive number here would be the basic times the fraction of people that are actually susceptible. And at that peak, as was said, the number of new recoveries th this at that peak, the stock of infectives is not going up and it's not going down. So inflow equals outflow. So recoveries, the rate, the number of people per day recovering is the same as the number of people per day that are getting infective, but also the effective reproductive number, the number of people I infect before I recover in the current context, given how many infectives there are around, will be what? Will be what? If it's not going up anymore, it will be what? If it's not going up, it's not going down. I infect... How many people before I recover on average? It's not going up or not going down. I It's how many? No. One. No. One. One. It was eight if I'm surrounded by total susceptibles. At this time, I'm not surrounded by total susceptibles. In fact, the number of susceptibles is way down here. It's a, it's a small fraction of its original value. Um, It's like 140,000 instead of 1.2 million. No, at this point, the number, the I will affect as an infective one person before I recover. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and that single person that I infect uh, will replace me. It's kind of like before I recover, I nominate, oh, this person's going to take my place. And and I sw uh, I recover that person's now infected. They nominate one person. They, you know, pass the baton. And so the number, total number of people being infected will stay the same at that point, or the effective reproductive number is one, where it's just passing the baton. Mm -hmm. After that peak, some infected aren't even infecting anyone before they recover. Precisely after that point, the number of susceptibles is continuing to drop, as Bab says. So the number of susceptibles is continuing to drop. So these infectives are fighting it harder and harder to find people around them to infect anymore. And so they're they're not even going to find one person to replace them. They're going to recover before infecting anyone. And now the number of infectives will be going down because you have all these people who were infected but haven't gotten a replacement, haven't been able to pass the baton. So the number of people going who are infective is, is going down, or equally, the number of recoveries will be greater than the number of infectives. That's why the stock is declining, right? The recoveries outpace the infectives. Are there still infections going on here? Yeah, there are still some infections. There just aren't enough to... to to replace the number of recoveries going on. Um, wow, that's 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 uh, ain't that something? Okay, something is um, something is really uh, really wild. Uh, wild here infection problems. Um force of infection, mean contacts per day. I would look for, uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, mm. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't, I don't see at the moment anything 
wait a minute, this is like 390 million and this is like 12 million. How is the number of infectives divided by this? This is bigger. How is it like only this? I would check out the formula for this because that, that looks suspicious um, here. Anyway, uh, I would speak with Matthias. Um, yeah, uh, the equations for the flows, this should be this divided by 10. That looks about right. This should be this times that, and that looks, uh, uh, what? This is like 1 billion. Oh, this is like 5 billion. Okay. Um, uh, no, 50 billion. Um, so anyway, uh, I would talk to Matthias. Okay. You folks got to go to class. Um, uh, uh, I am launching. So, um, so there's a turn in for this, uh, in class exercise two, uh, and it is published now and you have till one thirty to turn it in. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Take care there. And I will now hold office hours uh, till half past uh, at this at this point. Thank you.